So welcome to tonight's show, you're with Tom, Brian and Steve, and this is NRL from the sidelines, except we don't have a Brian with us tonight. Actually, I noticed, I was just wondering about that, it's, it's so tranquil, it's, it is. it's so calm, it's, it's just so zen, you know, it's, I, I wonder what was missing. Do you, do you think today's show will be a little bit more relaxed? Well, it feels it. It's it feels like it. a mellow, tranquil, classical sort of feel about it. It's just, it's missing something, but it's, I'm kind of liking it. It's not too bad. So, so to replace, because Brian's not here, um, I have brought in someone to sit in his place. Yes. And, and I, you know what? I'm presuming we're going to get as much intelligence out of Teddy <laughs> as we are with Brian, so. That's cruel. I oh, know, I oh, know. But you know what? It's me, and he can suck it up. <laughs> it's the cost, cost of not being here. I copped it right. a few times. Oh, you did cop it quite a few Absolutely. times. Absolutely. And yes. it's now Brian's turn. If he doesn't turn up... So it wasn't because his team lost, is why he's not here? Yes. Okay. It's exactly why. Right. Because okay. he was also going to have to say how good Mitchell Moses was going until he obviously had to go off. And, <laughs> and, and that was going to, he was going to struggle with that. He was going to struggle talking about Manly. He was going to mm. struggle talking about how good Souths were. He decided, I'm ditching the show. Right. So, okay, there you go. Not pretty, but it's done. Okay. Okay, so welcome to the show. We are going to talk about the round of NRL as we do every week that has just been played. Um, and it was Magic Round. Tom, what did you think of Magic Round, generally? Oh, look, I love Magic Round. I can't wait to get to Magic Round one, one weekend, uh, one year. Um, I just think, I mean, it's the same eight games on the same field, and that concerned me for a little while. But I don't know, it, it just, you have, the atmosphere is so much better because you have the supporters from 17 different teams yep. all inter, intermingled uh, you know, in the crowd. Whereas often you'd have two two teams mainly and maybe a random Rabbitohs fan, um, but this this time you had lots of noise, lots of excitement, lots of energy, and there, and apparently there were lots of things going on around the around the scene. So look, I think it's a great thing, and uh, I you know I, I look forward to it every year. You want to go, do you? I'd love to go. Oh, I couldn't think of anything worse. To really? Why? Oh yeah. Oh, just just the thought of. of mingling with everybody throughout the yeah i'm not a, i'm not a people person you're not a people person, i mean I'm, i mean look i come across as such a wonderful outgoing gregarious type of yeah no i don't trust me i don't i don't and as sally yeah. sally apparently went so sally you should give us a bit of a um uh, yeah. i know you showed some photos of selfies with with players but you should uh, show us some of the yeah, nightlife. Sally, put a bit on your on on our facebook page and let us yeah. see exactly what that was yeah. like so let's start um Friday night, Raiders 34, Dogs 30. Yep. Um, a bit of a schmozzle for both teams. I mean, <coughs> you know, Raiders were looking like they were going to run away with it, scored in the first minute. Yep. Um, dogs came back, mm. almost got the lead again. Raiders went off again. It, yep. it was a funny sort of game. It was a good game, yeah. but it was I a think, funny sort I of game. I think the score flattered the Dogs a little bit. Uh, yeah. I think the, the Raiders were much, much, the much, much better team. Uh, but that happens. I mean, I, I think it happened a couple of times this weekend. Um, and um, but you know, the Raiders are showing some um, some form at the moment. They really are. Yeah. Um, I mean, immediately they played the Bulldogs, which are who are low down on the on the table. But still, they've won I think four four games in a row now. So um, and if it, and this has all happened since the Jack Whiten announcement. So that's also interesting. This day he, he's obviously trying to prove himself that he's going to well. I was going to say he's coming to South, but I think he's trying to prove that he's going to give 110. Yeah. percent um, Interesting enough, one of his tries was disallowed, which was a, a pass to the head. Oh, a yeah. bit of a falcon yeah. should yeah. have should have actually been allowed, and, and I think the NRL have come out and said <coughs> it should have been. So sure. Yeah. Well, it was a clean. It was a clear falcon. Yeah. But the um, dogs are a bit funny at the moment. They mm, they mm. they they're in and out of a game. They they're doing some silly stuff, and they're mixing it with some brilliance. It just it. Seems strange at the well, moment. Well, they're also, like my team, um, tossing around their, their squad. I mean, Burton's moved from six to seven. Uh, Flanagan's uh, out of favour. They're talking about making a hooker. Um, uh, so, look, I, I think they're a bit in transit. They'll, they'll look forward to getting out of car back when he finally gets back. Yeah. Arthur Avarillo, Avarillo's been a standout. Uh, and Jacob yep. Preston. Yep. Jacob? Jacob Preston? Yep. Um, young, young fellow. Uh, going really, really well. Yeah. Um, hmm. 
So look, you know, I think they're building it. What I liked about the the press conference was that the um, the coach said uh, he was really unhappy um, about the game because people aren't doing their job, yeah. and he was going to rip into them. I think, and uh, that's what that's the kind of coach you want. You want yeah. somebody who's going to say, forget about the score, forget about the fact it was close, or even if you'd won, you're not doing your job properly. Yeah, what I expect is a lot more, and so that's you know that's a good sign for the club. Yep. Yeah. Let's talk about another str- another struggling club. Um, Broncos thirty two defeated Manly six. Yeah. Um, yeah. Manly were nowhere in this oh, game. Oh, terrible. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I look, I, I don't. Uh, yeah, the, the the Broncos are just. They just got their combinations right. Adam Reynolds is doing a great job as the general. Um, Ezra Mam's coming up. You know, he's 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 come out of nowhere really. I mean, if yep. you're a Broncos fan, you'd known him, but. He's really come out of nowhere. Cobbo's um, the kind of guy who can give you a few mistakes, but gee, when he's on, he's on. Um, and uh, but even you know Jesse Jesse Arthur's has been a journeyman around a lot of clubs. Yep. And he's he's playing solid as well. So when that's happening, when your lower players are playing well, then um, uh, that's a pretty good sign. And so, Herbie Farmworth, one of my favourites. I love Herbie Farmworth. He's terrific. So Broncos seem to have trouble if if a team comes out at them from the beginning, they seem to, to falter. Yes. We, they, it seems like the Broncos need to get on top early mm-hmm. before, you know, they start to, to falter. So, yeah. you know, and they've done that. I mean, they, mm. they were beaten by the Raiders a few weeks ago. Yep. Um, and the Raiders came out hard from the very beginning, right. same with South. Yep. yep. So, I'm, t- to me, the jury is still out on the Broncos. Yeah. I still don't honestly think that they can win the comp. Because uh, I expect them to fall over at some stage, but um, the the Eagles, what do you say? I mean, oh, they were they were terrible. Turbo is injured. I don't care what anyone <coughs> says. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be able to, able to run at full pace. Mm. Now he's, he's putting in, but his body's he's just trying. Not, not, yeah, not there. Um, Cherry had another great game. I mean, he was trying his heart out. <coughs> they really missed Jake in the middle. Yeah, um, but yeah, look, it was just a lackluster performance. I mean. <laughs> You got to hand it. Sometimes we we criticise the team who who didn't play well, but sometimes the other team just doesn't allow you to play well. Yep. And I think that was probably the case more than anything. But so, you expect more from Manly. So poor old Brown is some. Um, yeah. He's he's not happy today. That's he's right. Happy. That's right. Head up, head up, Brown. Mm. All right. Uh, let's go to. Um, Oh, hang on. There we go. Let's go to Suncorp Stadium. <coughs> Surprisingly enough, uh, Panthers eighteen, <coughs> Warriors six. Um, not a fully polished performance by the by the Panthers, but I think um, they're they're on their way back. I think um, they're you know they're not at the heights that they were last no. year, but not really. um, they're certainly not playing like they were the first few weeks. Yeah, you know they're returning some good form, which is great for my team. Um, <laughs> It's not all about your team. I know it isn't. Um, excuse me? No, it's all about South. It's not all about you, that's all. Please, let's get it right. Come the on. Right of the lead. Um, uh, yeah, so, um, look, Warriors try hard, and I was surprised that they weren't more competitive, um, but uh, Panthers were pretty clinical. Dylan Edwards was superb again. Nathan Cleary was terrific. Um, what do you say? I don't want to talk about the Panthers. Okay, but I do want to also talk about the Warriors. Yep. Um, and I thought the Warriors were good. I thought, you know, the Panthers showed their class. Mm. Um, during the week, the Warriors, one of the Warriors' sponsors has come out and accused the refs of cheating, accused the NRL of cheating. <coughs> um, yep. Now, I actually have... Brian actually made sent me a comment on that. Yep. Um, the Warriors' sponsor should be sued by the refs. He has attacked the integrity of the refs. They don't always get it right, and their integrity should never. Be, but their integrity should never be questioned. I I do tend to agree. Yeah. Um. I don't. I don't agree with suing him. I think someone needs to sit him down and say, "Listen, mm. you're part of an overall competition. Yeah. And yes, we're going to get it wrong, but you can't be saying stuff like that. Yeah. The um. The the coach. The coach has come out and and sort of uh, said said that that's not the the club's. Um, Philosophy, yep. um, and you know, made that fairly clear. Um, and the guy apparently backtracked, but he would have had a stern talking to, you know. It, and it's it's awkward, isn't it? Because he's paying good money to the club to uh, to sponsor them, 
Um, and then when he comes out and does that out of left field, yeah. it makes the club look bad. Yeah. And yet the club is trying to distance itself from those comments. And, and um, you and I said during the game that I thought that we thought the Warriors weren't getting the 50-50 calls. Yeah. They, they were getting some oh, yes. dud calls. I mean, you know, the Warriors get hit in the head yeah. and nothing gets done. Yeah. The Warriors hit someone in the head and it's a penalty. So, you yeah. know, uh, we talk about consistency all the time. but Or well, unconscious you know, bias. Well, I don't even want to go there, to be honest with you. I, well, I, I, I mean, think there is. I, that, I think there but, are times when uh, top teams, and it, you could probably say it about my team in previous years, but I, I do think the Panthers get a little bit of uh, bit of the rub of the green at the moment. Um, and I just I don't, I don't know why it is, and I don't think that the refs cheat. No, um, I just think that there's sometimes. I mean, it's like Jared and, and Victor. You know? Yep. Um, I think they treat those two differently. But yep. you know. Is that is that conscious? I don't think so. But I think you go looking for things with those sort of players. Yeah. Anyway. All right, let's move on to Dolphins and Sharks. 36 over 16. Yeah. 30 nil at halftime against the Sharks. Hard to believe, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Dolphins were just absolutely on fire <coughs> and the Sharks were nowhere. The Sharks looked like a second-rate team. Yeah, Sharks weren't even circling. No, they were lying face up in the water. That's what they were doing, belly up. Yes, yes. Uh, look, uh, you've got to give it. You've got to give it to Wayne Bennett. He just knows how to get a team up. Um, uh, they said in the news, they said in the commentary recently that um, he had. We all know he's got a pretty simple game plan, but yep. he was training him on three on two um, defense yep. or attack. I can't remember which. Um, but doing the very very basic things and repeated and repeated and repeated. And, um, one of the commentators said some people, some of the players look at each other you know, early on and they go, why are we doing this? And then they realise that it's all muscle memory. You know, At yep. some point, um, you know, they're galvanised, they play for each other, they, uh, they've, they've, they've dealt with all of these situations. And you know, it's, it, he's a genius. You know? And I, I, I've never liked him, but I've got to give it to him. You know, why haven't you liked him? Uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe he's his arrogance. I don't know. Um, but uh, and then he was also coach South, so that didn't help him. Um, oh, talk about un- unconscious bias. I know that's well, a actually conscious, that's conscious that's a very bias, conscious yeah. bias. I yeah. can yeah. tell you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but look, you know, thirty nil um, blew the Sharks away, and the Sharks are a good team. Um, so look, maybe it was just magic round, and you know, there were a few teams that rolled over and late played dead on magic round. Sadly, anyway. Which one are you talking about? Let's move on. Which. Let's move on. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get, we'll there. get there. We'll get there eventually. Yeah. Uh, let's go on to... Um, I keep going to say Suncorp, but it's stupid. Um, South Sydney Rabbitohs, 28, mm-hmm. Melbourne Storm. Uh, no, you missed the game in the middle. No. Dolphins, Warriors, no. Oh, I thought... Oh, yeah, no. I, I missed it. Sorry, I was trying to overlook it probably. Subconsciously. He's trying to take over. Subconsciously. <laughs> Brian, come back. <coughs> um, Rabbitohs, 28, Storm, 12. Yep. And I've got to say, I was... Super excited about the South's performance. Oh, it's dominant, absolutely dominant, and you know they're they're, they're in a rich vein of form at the moment. Mm. Everything's clicking. Um, <clears throat> we'll talk about that with the next or the other game, our game. Everything's clicking. Everything that needs to happen is happening with that team. Yep. Um, they are taking every opportunity possible. Yep. And uh, and everything's happening. Happening. Um, I, and look, I. I, I'm impressed by the fact that we, for years we've been a left-sided, uh, left-side dominant, ta- dominant team. Yep. Yep. Now it's it's either. So yep. two weeks ago, um, all the attack was going down the right side. Mm-hmm. Against Melbourne, all the attack was coming down left. Yep. And so the beauty of South now is that they can adjust depending on who they're playing mm-hmm. as to where they focus their attack. Yep. Um, and I've got to say, their defence was impressive. Yep. Yeah, look, everything was... There was there was nothing to complain about with that. Well, sorry about about the team's play, but let me have a can oh, I here it can comes. I have a word here it on, comes. on your fullback. First of no. all, first of all, let yep. me say yep. there was a couple of genius plays from Latrell Mitchell. Um, a couple of meters out, he he assesses the situation and puts a, a ninety degree kick in for uh, for Cody Walker yep. to catch. That was genius. By the way, that um, was a right foot kick. Uh, it was a right foot kick. Yes. Yes. And then he did a left foot left foot little grubber that bounced up. Perfectly for Alex Johnson. That yep. was genius. Uh, he had a fantastic game. Yep. But 
No buts. He had a fantastic. Yeah, yes. Let's just leave it there. He had no, a no, fantastic no, no. game. Everybody, we move on. Everybody who knows anything, Stephen. Here it comes back to unconscious bias. Go no, on. no, 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 no. I am with virtually everybody else who doesn't doesn't follow Souths. He catches the ball, puts his knee out. He's probably entitled to do that, but that was that was unsavory. He put his knee out, and then because he didn't like the idea of being tackled, and you could see that was clear. What right have you got to tackle me? He shoves Harry, uh, Harry Grant. He gets, tries to put a headlock on him. And when he gets up, he gives two other players another shove. Well, Harry and somebody else. And not a word is spoken. Now, so many other people got penalised for stuff uh, on Magic Ground. Latrell, the golden boy, nothing. That's the end of my rant. Thanks. Let's move on. Can you please, if you agree <laughs> with me, can you please... Make a comment on the Facebook site because the is, Steve's the only person who disagrees with it, I think. I could probably pull up the list of people on on our Facebook page and tell you which ones are going to agree with you and tell you which we ones aren't. We have 800 aren't. people, followers on our site. Yeah, we don't want 800 comments. Let's have 800 comments and I bet you the majority of them will be similar to what I've just said. Thank you. This was not a paid, a paid, paid announcement, <laughs> by the way. So, yeah, okay. Look, I, I will... I will Except that he was a little bit out of line in that tackle. But hang on, hang on. let me just. No, no, he does time. It, it was one tackle in a game. Yes, he but didn't every do it. game you can guarantee it's one going to tackle. happen. One tackle. He's just got. Oh, you know, on. for yeah, all yeah. his brilliance, he just gets away with stuff. You're, you're not going to tell me people at the moment. You're not going to tell me he's any different to Jared Wira Hargraves. Oh, or, it's different. Oh no, it's not. They. Look, Jared look, plays aggressive and sometimes he gets it wrong. L- Latrell goes, I don't like you, smash or rip your jumper up and throw you on the ground. And it's just arrogance. It just drives me Sorry. nuts. It was the same with the Roosters, I've got to say. Loved him there, didn't like his a- attitude, but it's just now on steroids. Okay. I can live with that. Moving on. Um, but yes, look, impressive performance. I'm not sure South should be um, competition favourites. I do. But. I hate Look, to say it, but, but I do. And, and I really say, I say that honestly because it's week 10. We've still got 17 oh, weeks sure. to go. They could fall yeah. over with a hell, hell of a yeah. lot of injuries. Easy. I don't think <clears throat> that they're going to lose what they've got now. And I don't know that... I don't know they're going to lose too many more games. And I hate saying that. But but that seems, seems yeah. pretty clear to me. Well, what's impressed me is that I've said it for many weeks. We have the toughest start of any club. Yeah. And yes, we've lost three games. But... Penrith, Melbourne, and the Roosters, and then now we've come back and beaten Panthers and the and Melbourne. Yep. Roosters, we play at the end of the year. Yeah. So. All right, yeah. let's go on to, and and what was considered to probably be the dumbest game, <laughs> by many. Um, yeah. West Tigers <clears throat> over Dragons, eighteen sixteen, and I don't say dumbest in mm. in terms of the Tigers, I do say it in terms of the Dragons. Yep. You know, he, you've got a coach who is struggling for his survival. And you just play dumb. Well, the Dragon supporters have been saying for a long time, he's got to go. Um, and, um, you know, in the news it said tonight that they're probably not going to change mid-season now. So the, the Dragons fans, you've got this for the rest of the season, I think. Um, ben Hunt is the one player who tries his heart out every game. Yes. Um, Jaden Sullivan... I didn't know much about Jaden Sullivan, but he was impressive. Um, very cocky, but, you know, very impressive player. And, uh, um, I, you know, I, they just made some odd decisions. That, that, that last play where, um, uh, you know, they should have scored. Yes. Um, it should have gone through the hands. Um, and Moses Suley should have just... He's big he enough. He should have just run at run at the. He had well, one player in front of him at that oh, stage. Oh yeah, he had he, one one guy attempted to tackle. Some were coming in from the sides, and then the young fullback front. got his hands on him after he'd thrown the ball. But then the, that young fullback also then got to the to the corner post and stopped Ravalawa. Yeah. I mean, he he's geez, he's a talent. This kid, yeah. young kid, yeah, he is Buller. He is. I got to tell you, I, I I thought the Tigers played very well. Yeah. I mean, for what they can do. Yeah. You know, for what they can do, I thought they played very well. Yeah, if they were playing the Storm or they're playing the Panthers or the Rabbitohs at the moment, they wouldn't have had that scoreline. But no. they're playing a struggling Dragons team and they did just enough to win the game. And they hung on. That was the other good thing was they hung on for like, I kept looking at the clock and there was like 
10 minutes to go when it was 18-16 yep. and they actually held the Dragons out and that's a sign of a team that's got some confidence in them. Well, here's a team that doesn't. So, DeBellin, Sewer, Bird, and I'm only naming the big names. Yep. Hunt, Suli, I mean, Ravriala. They've got decent players in this yep. team. Yep. If you were to put them on paper, they should have beaten the Tigers by yep. a score. But anyway. Well, Tyrell Sloan nearly won the game against the, the Roosters on Anzac Day yep. themselves. And I thought, Jesus, kids tell him. But the last couple of weeks, he's been extremely ordinary. And um, it's, in a sense, vindicated um, why yep. Anthony Griffin is held, Griffin's held him back. You know? So, I, I, yeah, I don't understand. All right, let's go on to North Queensland 20, defeating the Roosters 6. Yep. Um, Tom, I have a message from Brian here. Yep. Uh, where did I do with it? Uh, da, 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 it is here. There it is. Okay. Um. Got to ask Tom. Mm -hmm. You ready? Yep. What's wrong with the Roosters? Walker needs to be back. Suwali needs to go to Union early. They've got no attack. Yep. Yeah, um, Tedesco uh, was interviewed today and he said that um, you can tell, you can feel it when everybody's connected. And he said, I can feel that they're not. He says, it's not that hard to fix. You've just got to, you've got to drill and drill and drill and drill. Um, he said, we've got too much talent in this team not to be scoring points, but it just, it's just not happening. Um, Trent Robinson said at the press, press conference, well, he effectively said, I don't think he said it in many words, but it sounded like it was an attitude thing. Um, they just don't seem to be in the, in the right heads at the moment. Um, look, it's a five-day turnaround to play the Panthers, so I'm not expecting a massive turnaround this, this week, but um, I'm hoping that they might... This, this might have actually at least exposed what's going on and they've actually sat down and had a bit of a chat because um, I just can't keep doing this no. at the moment. Uh, look, from the very outset, the, the Cowboys, who have been in 16th position, just wanted it more on the day. They were yep. hungrier. Um, they were more connected. They, they, you know, what I did notice when I was watching the game was um, Townsend got to kick an attacking kick from our 40... Yep. And it was a wet game. It started raining two seconds yeah. before the game yeah. started. Everything was dry until sake. that one. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And it was pelting down. Uh, so, you know, very clever. Kick bombs, bombs, bombs. And uh, we diffused some of them, um, but not all of them. And a couple led, led to tries, I think. Um, when we were attacking, we were kicking out of our end. Ex well, I, we may be at halfway. But it was no attacking kick all the time. No. And, it, it, you know, there was a comment today, uh, Mitchell Pierce might might want to come back to the Roosters for a year, which I hope doesn't happen. No. They said, yeah, that'd be great. Fifth tackle bombs, uh, no attack. That's yeah. the way he's... And, and I think that's the way they're coached. Unfortunately, they're coached because to trust their defence and to kick deep and, and, and lock players in yeah. the corner. But there's no, there's no attacking kicks. There's no, 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 no danger. And so that's what they did all game. They just kicked, kicked and kicked and kicked near their end. But the problem was the Cowboys made lots of metres and, um, you know, they came okay. up with their chocolates. Let me ask, you're a Roosters supporter. Yep. What do you want Suli, Suali to do? Go, back, stay to, go back to the wing. So they need to put Manu, Manu back to the centres, put Suwali back to the wing where you're successful um, for now. Bring, bring Walker bring back. Bring Walker back. Um, you know, I, I, you know I, I think the plan is, I think, to keep Manu on or and try to keep developing that. But that still leaves Walker in the dark, and we can't afford to lose him. No. He said quite clearly he loves the Roosters. He was growing up, growing up. He loved the Roosters. He wants to play at the Roosters. I'm not worried in the short term, but if he, you know, he spends a whole year in New South Wales Cup, he's going to want to go, especially if we're successful. Yeah. You know, that's that's the problem. Yeah. And so then, as far as the Wally goes, look, I had big raps on him earlier on. He's having a really poor poor season, but then so's the team. Um, he's not making a lot of metres, he's not making any breaks, they're not kicking to him. Put him back to wing. Yeah. Um, you know, his, his, cent his centre defence doesn't seem to be good. And I'm not an expert on defence and how that all works, but uh, he seems to defend poorly at centre. Maybe he'd be better, at, better back at wing. And right. we miss tubes, of course. And you miss tubes. miss tubes. All right. Um, Gold Coast 26, Parramatta Eels 24. I honestly thought the Titans were going to run away with this until... Parramatta were able to come back, but... Yeah, I only saw the highlights of this game. I had commitments late in the evening. Yeah, um, I've got to say, 
Fafita is playing the best football I've yeah. seen him play in yep. a long time. Yep. Forum was terrific. You know, Johnny on the spot is yep. where he needed to be. Yep. Calm Pereira can, can continue. I reckon to Manly could use a player like Forum. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think yeah. they should have a look at him. Yeah, that old halfback. That, that old half. <laughs> that old half. Yeah, we all have rogue old halves, don't we? Um, yeah, look, I, I was impressed. And I've got to say, um, how... Someone has to snap up Jaden Campbell. Yes, yes. They really do. I mean, I, I know he's going to come off the bench for the Titans, and he's, but he's, he's so good. He's too good to come off the bench. Look, I look at him and I think, the guy must snap like a twig, yeah. but he... Doesn't and he's, he's got so great good. footwork. Oh. He's got his dad's footwork, um, and he's bigger and rangier. But uh, he's yeah, he's an impressive young man. Yeah, and look, I've got to also Tanner Boyd has slotted into that half role, and he's kicking goals. And uh, you know, for a guy who was really a bit part player, he's sort of taken the bit by the horn. Yeah, bull by the horn. And, um, yeah. and look, you know, Parramatta lost Moses. Um, yeah. How, how, about how, how far in did they lose him? Uh, to be honest with you, I can't remember. I was trying okay. to think the same thing. But, yeah, I think it was pretty early. So, yeah. But, look, the Titans have, Titans have put on, what, they beat Manly and they've beaten yep. uh, the Eels. They're two pretty decent teams. So maybe it's things are starting to click for them. Maybe. So, All right. Yeah. You want to do the ladder for us? Okay. It's a um, good-looking ladder. I wish I could have done it last week. But, anyway. It's a great-looking um, ladder. No, it was looking better last week. Um Broncos remain on, uh, on in first position on 16 points. The Rabbitohs on 14. Then we have a number of teams on 12. Uh, the Panthers, the Sharks, the Dolphins, the Storm, the Titans, and the Roosters, all on, oh, and the Raiders, who are in ninth position, all on 12 points. Um, then in 10th position, the Seagulls uh, on 11. The Warriors on 10. Uh, the Knights on 9. They had to buy this week, um, all in Bali. Um, the Eels on eight, the Cowboys on eight, the Bulldogs on eight, the Dragons on six, and the West Tigers on six, uh, only on the bottom due to their for and against. Probably deserve to be higher up. Probably deserve to be higher up. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's go on to next week's round, which starts on Thursday night at Amy Park, Melbourne Storm and Ooh, the Broncos. This is going to be a ripper. This is, should be a great game. This should be a terrific game. Well, we'll see what the, the, the Broncos are made of, I think, because the Storm are a bit out of sorts at the moment. Um, their uh, yeah, their their big players are not playing quite to their potential. I mean, Munster always gives you a good game. Yep. Meany's been terrific, but I think Jerome Hughes has been a little bit subdued. Um, Harry Grant's been a little bit subdued, I think too. And they've got a lot of young players in the fringe, um, so that's probably why they've not been as good this year. Um, the Broncos, yeah, look, let's see what they're made of. Um, uh, I. I, Where are you going? I'm gonna, I'm gonna tip the Broncos just because they can score points okay. at the moment. All right. Yeah. Brian's gone for Melbourne Storm. I'm gonna go Melbourne Storm as well. I, okay. I look. Melbourne aren't playing well at the moment. Yeah. But I, I, I really have trouble tipping against tipping them against them at home is yeah. just impossible for me. Yeah. Um. Let's go to Acor Stadium where the Dogs are playing the Warriors, and I've got to tell you. Brian has picked the dogs because he, he thinks the NRL hate the Warriors. <laughs> so he's just gone the dogs. So. And this was the 32... Was this the 32... Oh, no, that was Manly in the Knights. No, this was where the, the Warriors beat the dogs, I think, 32-30. Uh, like something that. like that, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Um, uh, look, I think I'll... Oh, I don't really know. I'm a bit of a fence-sitter on this one. Um... I'm going to do the Warriors. I think they're going to try and bounce back. Yeah, I'm going Warriors too. A couple of bad, I, bad performances. I think the Warriors have been playing well, but a little bit unlucky. And, yeah. I, and I think coming up against a team like the Dogs... Is this Indigenous round? Sweet. No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. No, it's it week after. A, yeah, no. a message about no. Indigenous jerseys. No, okay. week after. Yeah. Okay, Blue Bet Stadium on Friday night where the Panthers are playing the Roosters. Well, of course, I'll be tipping the Roosters with no confidence. But, um, you know, Panthers at Panther Stadium... Uh, you'd have to think the Panthers are going to win. Um, this will really test what the Roosters are made of. Uh, I think. Will. You know, I just want to be competitive. I don't want to blow out score. Yep. I don't care if we lose if it's competitive. If we show some heart, score a few points, um, and defend well. Um, that's all I need to see. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm going Panthers, and so is Brian. Yeah. Not. Not a surprise. Acor Stadium. My beautiful wife and I will be out on Saturday afternoon at Acor Stadium cheering on the bunnies. 
playing the Tigers. Mm. Well, look, you know, the way the Rabbitohs are playing, you can't see anything but a Rabbitohs win. Uh, again, I hope the West Tigers you know are what? going to be competitive. Oh, no. look, they're not, they, they, might, they might draw the score a bit closer than it would have been a few weeks yeah. ago, but I can't see the Rabbitohs. Well, I'm, I'm hoping the Rabbitohs don't come out complacent. They shouldn't. Yeah, I don't think so. They shouldn't, so. but... Um, Brian's going Rabbitohs as well with yep. a with a emoji vomit. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. That it's it. I, I started that the vomit emoji. The, the, well, the vomiting after mentioning the Rabbitohs. Um, yeah, and it's not on. And I think it's if they acceptable. win the premiership, I'm going to have a week off sick. Oh, if we win the premiership, I'll be dancing naked in the streets. Oh, see that? We're going to hold into that. Yeah, but no one wants to see it. So no, that's who okay. cares? Um, North Queen. <laughs> I care. North Queensland and St George Illawarra at Queensland Country Bank Stadium. Yeah, I'm North Queensland. North Queensland. But, uh, I can't. If they can, if they can play the way they did last week, then um, and the Dragons just a rebel, unfortunately. Sorry, Barry. Yeah, even more of a rebel than my team. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear. Yeah, Brian and I have gone cows as well. Uh, Canberra Raiders and Parramatta Eels. There will be no um, Mitchell Moses. He's on the eleven-day turnaround, I think. Yeah, and they yep. deliver they stand down for the head concussion. So, I'm not sure who they bring in for the halves. Um, but Raiders at home, I think they've got enough. They're buoyant enough. I think. Um, yeah, I, I think yep. it'll be close. I agree. But I think the I Raiders agree. Raiders as well. So yep. does Brian. Uh, North, um, sorry, Newcastle and the Titans. A few weeks ago, I would have said the Knights for sure, but I think the Titans, um, again, another team that's buoyed by its form at the moment. Yeah. And to round off the weekend, Manly, Sea Eagles and the Cronulla Sharks. Then it'll be closer. Uh, Jake back? I don't know. I haven't checked. Uh, Jake back would make a big difference for me. Yep. Um, if Jake's back, I'm tempted to tip the Sea Eagles in a tight game at home. Uh, if Jake's not back, Sharks by a lot. So Brian has said Eagles, which yep. you'd expect. Yep. He says they can't be that bad again. Well, he said that before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree. Um, no, I'm going Sharks. I'm sorry. I, I, I think the Sharks are going to have such a hard week of training mm. after what they yeah. performed on the weekend. Yeah. I, I yeah. think Fitzgibbons is going to be yeah. drilling it into them. Yeah. Ruthless, yeah. for sure. I, I can't see the Sharks getting anywhere close. Yep. Oh, sorry, the Seagulls getting anywhere close. That draws us to an end. Yes. Um, Brian, anything intelligent you want to end the show with? That's about as intelligent as it gets. Tom, <laughs> anything you want to end? Oh, look, I'm hoping for a better performance from my Brewsters this week. All right. Look, thank you for watching. You're with Tom, Brian and Steve, and this is From the Sidelines. Um, just a reminder, you can watch us on Facebook, you can watch us on YouTube, and you can listen to the podcast download on Spotify. So please... Mm. Um, numbers and, are increasing. And people are. Yeah. People are. Yep. yeah, we're getting a few downloads now, and we're and so the numbers are increasing. And we ask you to keep sharing the show. Um, we enjoy doing it, and we hope you enjoy watching. Thanks for everything. Bye bye. See ya. <laughs>